Today we will uh, talk about a problem of counting integer points inside a convex polytope uh, which has vertices in Q n. So, I will have a polytope P. I can think of it it is in some R n, but I put some extra condition that P is cont so the vertices of P say what P is contained in Q n. So, uh, so, all the vertices are of uh, rational coordinates. Then we are interested in how many integer points are there in P. So, we are interested in the cardinality of P intersection Z n. Uh, not only this cardinality, we want to say that how this cardinality varies. That means, when we dilate this K, P. Uh, so, we are interested in the cardinality of this set, this polytope and we are interested more specifically how this function grows. This is a function of k. Let us define it as i p of k and we want to know how this function grows with respect to k. So, so here uh, what are the conventions are p uh, a rational polytope. So, this means p a rational polytope. You can say that this is a rational and uh, and without loss of generality we can assume that p is contained in uh, in the first quadrant. Because if not, we can uh, if we shift by an integral coordinate, then uh, it does not affect the number of lattice points. We can uh, find a uh, suitable shift that does not affect the uh, uh, this number of lattice points, uh, I mean this functions i p k. So, this remains, uh, so, uh, this assumption is a safe assumption. But now, now first of all, what is a polytope uh, in your polytope? So, there are two definitions of polytope. First is that uh, P is convex hull, you can say equal to convex hull of uh, finitely many points, points. But since we are uh, taking a rational polytope, uh, P is a convex hull of finitely many points inside Q n. This is also equivalent to say that P is a uh, convex polyhedra, which means P is intersection of half spaces. A half space, how is it look like? Uh, we are in Q n, so a affine space will look like something summation A i x i equal to some B i and the half space will look like summation a i x i equal to is less or equal to b i, i equal to 1 to n. Uh, I will introduce a another coordinate j, sorry this is j and when j is uh, some number j say there are l half spaces. So, uh, inter so here I will say this means intersection of half spaces, this is the first point intersection of half spaces, half spaces and the second half one that uh, P is bounded and bounded. So, <coughs> these two things are equivalent one can show that one implies the other. So, uh, uh, a convex polytope uh, either a convex hull of finitely many points or intersection of half spaces which is bounded. We will use this alternate both the definitions to do many calculations further. Now, now what we uh, want to uh, prove is that we want to deal with the integral points inside uh, P z n, but look at this one. Uh, this is not exactly integral, so we say K P intersection z. So, when an element k p intersection j, so suppose uh, some integer say m 
uh, some integer vector say m belongs to uh, k p intersection j n. This means m by k belongs to p intersection j n. So, we are actually counting the yeah. 1 by k j n. So, actually we are count, uh, yes, so counting the rational points inside p. So, I will come to this more precisely, but uh, before that I will uh, I'll associate a monoid with p. So, let us associate a monoid E p. E p will be the points, it is a monoid in n of n plus 1 just one dim uh, one coordinate extra than that of p gamma 1 gamma 2 up to gamma n and t such that summation so p satisfies the equation a i j x i is less or equal to b j here it will satisfy the equation a i equal to 1 to n a i j uh, x i uh, a i j gamma i is less or equal to t times b j and when j is in appropriate range. Clearly, this is a monoid and 0 is there in this set clearly. Uh, if we have such a monoid, this elements of this monoid some sense in one to one correspondence with uh, with the uh, points of p intersection z n and k, inter k p intersection z n. How is it? Uh, so, here is a lemma for it that mm, say I say this vector total vector to gamma, gamma t belongs to E p if and only if, if and only if. Well, I, uh, one of the following statement holds either gamma t is equal to 0 or gamma by t belongs to p. Right. Now, uh, given this lemma, what are the uh, elements of k p intersection j, uh, z n? So, so elements of uh, k p intersection j n k, uh, k p intersection j n they are uh, they correspond to all the elements gamma of k belongs to the I am writing capital K gamma k belongs to E p. So, so understanding this monoids uh, helps us to count how many elements are there in KP intersection Z n. How will it count it? So, given any monoid, we can actually associate a uh, power series to this monoid. So, uh, so how do you associate a power series? By associating a t uh, term to each of the element of the monoid. So, given any any vector gamma 1 to gamma n t, we can associate some, I am introducing some new variables say x 1 power gamma 1, x n power gamma n and t power n. And, and we look at this uh, uh, monoid algebra. So, we can, so, uh, so, k, k take any, okay, so I will say q is because the notation won't conflict, k x power beta. So, beta belongs to any monoid, any monoid, monoid uh, say m, then this, uh, this is an algebra, this is a q algebra. 
or we can instead of uh, q I can put any f uh, field of characteristic 0. So, uh, given uh, yeah, so here is a sketch of the things what happens that given any uh, such uh, monoid you associate a uh, algebra to it and uh, we say that that algebra is finitely generated over the base field. And once the algebra is finitely generated over the base field we can associate uh, we can get the and it is a graded algebra and we can get the Hilbert series series of that algebra and that is a rational function. Once we know a rational function we can get a formula for the uh, once we know a rational function. So, what is that rational function will be the rational function will be. So, yeah, I am associating a rational function to P via E P. So, x means x 1 to x n and this is this rational function is summation uh, x 1 power gamma 1 x 2 power gamma 2 x n power gamma n and y power t where gamma 1 gamma n and t belongs to E p. I can do this for any monoid and I can get uh, this is uh, this will be the Hilbert series series and this is a rational function. And once I have this rational function I can uh, specify the values of x i to be 1. If I specify the values of x i to be 1 say now let us say if t is equal to 0 gamma has to be 0 because if t equal to 0 then suppose there are some gamma i and this is lesser equal to 0 then uh, so we have some conditions that gamma i lesser equal to 0. So, any multiple of gamma i is lesser equal to 0 no uh, t equal to 0. So, this equation comes to be oh, yeah, lesser yeah. equal to 0. Yeah. Yeah. Gamma is a non negative. A i j s are something we do not care whatever is it. Uh, so, we l make it such that it is lesser equal to. So, all are lesser equal to 0. Now, now this gamma can be arbitrarily large I can make it as big as possible that contradicts the boundedness of the polytope and that is why this cannot be uh, anything uh, non zero. Yeah, so, so this uh, so uh, let us come to this function s p x y now specializing all the x to be the vector for uh, 1. So, uh, huh, so just remember this symbol is for counting the rational points. Otherwise, I'll recall raising this bit and uh, yes. So uh, now uh, define something. Okay, I can write it there. So we have S uh, P. I'll write the vector instead of X. I'll have all the ones and Y. And let's call this to be S P Y. Just define it to be S P Y and this is equal to. So, all those uh, coordinates that has uh, so, what is the so, it is some power series ok. So, it is some power series y power t, but what is uh, here summed of here all the coordinates uh, that are so, here all the uh, so, t is from 0 to infinity and here gamma 1 to gamma n t belongs to E p. Uh, I can say 1 and uh, here is a bracket. So, this is the coefficient. So, these many things are there, but what is this? This is exactly by this that lemma this is exactly equal to summation t equal to 0 to infinity uh, i p of uh, k uh, i p of t yeah i p of t uh, y power t uh, just to recall i p of uh, t equal to the number of points inside k intersection 
sorry k p intersection z m t p intersection z m sorry again okay, just notation problem. So, all the number of points inside this. So, uh, we get this series. Now, suppose we know some way that this uh, S p x y is a rational function. Then uh, S p y is a rational function. Uh, suppose uh, here I am assuming, I am saying, I will say what is the theorem uh, implies this latter that suppose S p y is a rational function. What does that mean? This means that S p y is equal to some p x p y by q y. Y belongs to uh, sorry uh, p p and q are in C y. Then uh, then I can find a formula for I p of t. But here I can get something better that I can get that q y is uh, so roots of q y roots of q y are some dth root of unity of unity, dth root of 1. And I can even further say that um, uh, d uh, can, uh, we can assume, uh, we can take d can, because this d is not unique, we can take d uh, to be the dimension of p. Of p. So, so, if we get all these things, suppose it happens, then we can say, so if all this suppose, like whatever he says, this implies, this whole statement implies that I uh, p of K. Uh, here I am again changing the variable from t to k, whatever. So, I p of k is a quasi polynomial. So, uh, so I will uh, say what is a quasi polynomial? A quasi polynomial is a polynomial with some period. For example, let us define quasi polynomials. I will give some examples. Uh, so, the variable I am think taking that quasi polynomials in k and for example, take k plus minus 1 power k. This is a quasi polynomial. It is a polynomial when k is uh, when I take k equal to some 2 n 2 n or k equal to 2 n plus 1. So, when n varies now, k is a polynomial, uh, this is a polynomial. Uh, second, I can say that, okay, uh, similarly, root over of minus 1 power uh, like 5 root over of minus 1 power k times uh, k square plus k plus 1 plus root over of minus 1 power I say something times say 3 k times k plus 1. So, this is also a quasi polynomial though we can reduce this to further, but this is a quasi polynomial. What is in general? So, definition uh, uh, I'll uh, so qua uh, okay. So uh, quasi polynomial is something like uh, C D of n 
sorry C D of uh, K say K power D plus C D minus 1 of K, K power D minus 1 plus so on plus C 0 of D, where for which there exist uh, some m such that C j of m i plus r is a polynomial. Uh, so, r fixed. Uh, to elaborate it little more, uh, sorry c not k. To elaborate it little more, uh, who says that this is a quasi polynomial if and only if uh, this, this is equal to, so we can write it as some P1 of n, sorry, P1 of uh, k, uh, gamma 1 power k plus P2 of k, gamma 2 power k plus so on, PR of k, gamma r power k, okay, gamma r power k. Uh, J m is fixed, so p j of m i plus r is constant. How can you, of course, it is a polynomial. Oh, uh, sorry. No, uh, I, I varies. I varies. It's a, uh, it's a polynomial in i? Yeah. We can say it's a polynomial in m i plus r, but which is also same as saying polynomial in i. So, we want to say that it's a polynomial in this variable k itself. But that does not matter. Uh, okay, so, so I thought I knew this definition now I am confused. <laughs> okay, okay, I will uh, <laughs> do this. So, uh, this is equivalent uh, such that gamma r power say m equal to 1. So, this thing is equivalent to that uh, this, uh, let us say this polynomial to be some p k, uh, sorry, I will say some r k say, r k, this is, this is our r k, then summation r k x power k k equal to 0 to infinity is equal to some uh, function let us say p 1 of okay, p q are not okay, p is used. So, let us say q 1 of x by q 2 of x q 1 q 2 in c of x and uh, so, we can find a q 2, we can uh, reduce it to such a thing that uh, uh, roots of uh, q 2 x are m th root of unity. Of unit. Okay, so, uh, this quasi polynomial is going to play a very crucial role further. So, this is the definition of the quasi polynomial. Uh, I'll, uh, so, and here are a few examples, and when we do further examples, we will let you know how the things behave. Now, uh, now we will do some calculation with some specific example. For example, let us consider P to be the 
simplicial polytroph. Uh, I mean, the, the n simplex. Uh, let P, we say like delta n, the n simplex. What does it mean? It's the so delta n is uh, convex all of uh, zero, uh, then e one to e n, uh, where e i is equal to uh, zero, uh, then one at ith place, and zero further. Okay, so ma uh, sorry. R of k defines the beta. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just giving a name to define that generating function. Yeah, so okay, so uh, the theorem is I'll, which is actually easy. This. I delta n k is equal to you had to do n factor there. The number of points inside this is this. Okay, so let's try this. So what is I delta n of zero? It has just zero. So as the point, so this is equal to one because the zero point itself. I delta n of 1. This is the number of integral points in uh, in delta n, which is equal to n plus 1. Right. Similarly, we can go on counting. Now, uh, now let's so uh, let's see this matches with this uh, formula or not. If I put k equal to 0, then uh, yeah, it's 1. And if I put k equal to 1. Uh, it is uh, n plus 1 clearly. Uh, further also we can match this formula, but let us uh, write a generating function for this. Let us write uh, some T n of x equal to summation i uh, delta n of k uh, x power k, just a formal power series. We assume that it's convergent and so on, does not matter. So, uh, now this, this I can, uh, uh, okay, so uh, sorry, I have to put x, x power k, okay. So, this is equal to uh, summation. I, uh, Okay, so uh, uh, this uh, delta n can also alternatively defined as uh, like this is the intersection of the following and uh, x one plus. So this is delta, n, right? This is the intersection of these faces is delta. N. Uh, now, uh, so the I can instead of uh, this, I can introduce an extra variable and make it an equality. I can say that th these are all non negative solutions to x1 plus xn plus xn plus 1 equal to 1. So, uh, so number of uh, so, introducing saying x n plus 1. So, number of integral points in uh, k delta n intersection z n. So, uh, the cardinality of i delta n of k is equal to uh, 
the uh, this x 1 to x n plus 1 such that summation x i is equal to k and x i uh, are positive integers, x i belongs to n n n 0. So, this basically counts the number of partitions of k having at most n plus 1 parts, right. So, we will we can directly from there it directly follows the formula, but uh, we can just write it here uh, x to be k uh, can be now written as x 1 to x n. summation i equal to 1 to n plus 1, 1 to n plus 1. Yeah. So, here we take all the points x 1 to x n plus 1 such that uh, summation x i equal to k. Now, uh, this can be oh sorry. Uh, okay. So, I am changing this variable because there are a lot of x. Uh, this is y, this is y, that's clear. Now, this uh, this can be written as, so I am using this board again. So, now I can write a T n of y is equal to uh, product of i equal to uh, 1 to n plus 1. Summation y x n is less or equal to k. Other conditions are just as it is. It will this yeah. So y power x i x i equal to zero to infinity, which is equal to one by one minus y. and this gives n plus 1 and which is equal to summation n plus k uh, choose n I guess n plus k choose k I can say uh, y power k k equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, yes, uh, for a quasi polynomial, I can also define a degree, which I did not say that I can. Uh, so, quasi polynomial looks like summation p i power gamma p i of k, uh, k gamma i power k. So, I can take the uh, degree of quasi polynomial to be the maximum degree of all the p i's, which is intuitive. So, the first, uh, so here we will prove a few things later. Uh, we won't prove, we will just say this as it is that uh, i p of k uh, degree of this is equal to dimension of p. Okay. Second, second observation, what is the uh, volume of delta n? 1 by n factorial. One by n factorial. Uh, you can uh, show that this volume is 1 by n factorial. Uh, and uh, where does 1, uh, what is, wh where does uh, 1 by n factorial comes in i delta n k? It comes as the coefficient of the uh, maximum degree. So, uh, coefficient of uh, uh, k power uh, degree of or dimension of p is equal to volume of p. Third, uh, this actually you can see uh, without going anything deep. Third uh, is that, uh, okay, so I think any other observation. Huh. So, uh, this delta n is not a quasi polynomial, it is a polynomial. 
so uh, the if p has integral vertices, the vertices inside Zn instead of Qn, integral vertices, so then I p of k is a polynomial. Polynomial in k. Okay, sorry. So, so uh, with all these observation, we can now state the uh, what does Erhard's theorem says. Yeah, uh, wait. So we can uh, get uh, all this notice. Uh, what is the, what are the notation says in this case? So. What is, what is the notation says E p here? E p is equal to all the gamma 1, gamma n of t uh, inside uh, z, uh, inside the positive integers lattice such that summation gamma i, i equal to 1 to n is lesser equal to t. Right? So, here the monoid attached to it is this one. Now, uh, uh, given this is the monoid, what is the power series? Uh, power series uh, will turn out to be uh, E delta n, okay, this is the delta n, E delta n of uh, x 1 to x n comma y. this l 1 by 1 minus y times product of j equal to 1 to n 1 minus x j y. This you can prove easily by uh, similar calculations. Here uh, you can think of y power x i as x i itself and this will come um, as the implication. Or uh, not, yeah. So that we can do. So uh, this I'm uh, not proving how it comes. And from here we can say that s delta n of y is equal to one by one minus y power n plus one, which we got exactly before. So uh, uh, so in the in a special case, uh, e delta n the power series in x and y and the power series in y are the following ones. Now, let us say the Erhard's theorem. Okay. Uh, like uh, okay, so so uh, assume P uh, is a rational polytope, rational polytope in first quadrant. In And let us uh, dimension of P equal to D. And uh, let V is equal to set of vertices of you, set of vertices of P. Then if such a thing is there, then uh, S of p x y is a rational function in x and y. Function in x y. So, I have a polynomial, uh, it is ratio of two polynomials in x 1 to x n and y. Second, Uh, 
uh, the denominator uh, uh, denominator of S P X Y can be set to product. So, uh, uh, given a uh, vector with uh, rational coordinates, I can define its denominator to be the LCM of all the denominators. So, product of uh, x, uh, x power denominator of uh, v times v y power denominator of v minus 1 when v belongs to the vertex set. So, uh, what is x power uh, a x power an integer means? So, x power of like 1 to I mean x, x 1 x 2 square. Okay, so, this is how the definition of this is and so, this is the denominator. Third, Uh, pole of S P Y, pole at Y equal to 1 of S P Y is exactly D plus 1. Okay. Fourth, uh, pole at any other point, pole any other y, y not equal to 1, each of order I can say is of order d plus 1, is of order less or equal to d plus 1. So, all these uh, Uh, denominator of I cleared out uh, the fractions so that I make a integral coordinates and that fraction went to y power denominator. Yeah. So, you can think of it as gamma by t uh, is v and uh, denominator v is t and gamma equal to denominator of v times v. Now, uh, so this is what is Erhard theorem is. Okay, uh, let us not go into the proof of the theorem. We can do some more interesting things with it this less time. Uh, so, uh, so uh, some consequences, so corollary 1. So, let us say, let us say object systems. Okay, I am not writing it as corollary, I can just say the here the object systems I wrote. That uh, uh, degree of i p k equal to dimension of p follows from uh, the fact that uh, the pole at 1 is equal to uh, the dimension of p plus 1, which is d plus 1. And uh, coefficient of k uh, for dimension of p equal to volume of p. This you can, uh, for example, think of uh, p is a polynomial and uh, sorry, think of uh, p has integral coordinates and so i p k is a is some polynomial. Then, uh, when we uh, divide, when we take, uh, so uh, what we do is, like we make, uh, uh, we divide uh, the, uh, what I am saying, huh, we divide uh, p uh, in small uh, cubes of size k. And so we, uh, okay, so I can say. So, what does I, uh, IPK counts the number of points in 
uh, uh, KP uh, intersection ZM. So, we dilated P uh, K times and count the number of points, which is same as we uh, count uh, all those, we divide P with a grid of uh, length 1 by K and count the number of points. And the, uh, now, uh, we multiply the volume of each of the grid, which is 1 by K times dimension of P. So, what we get? So, uh, volume of uh, P uh, by uh, this Riemann integration is limit k goes to 0 dimension of the cube, which is equal to 1 by k power dimension of p times i p k, which is equal to the uh, first coefficient, which is equal to coefficient of k power degree of p. Uh, so, this you can this is very easy. You can uh, get a clear picture if you think a little bit. So, so uh, this is how the volume comes from that. And the third point, if P has integral vertices, then I P K is a polynomial in K. Uh, that's because uh, when uh, P has integral vertices, then when you assign each of the x to be one, then in the and then denominator of V is equal to one. So we get y minus one power d plus one, and that gives a polynomial of d because uh, the, the denominator of V is always 1. And that is how we get these observations. Now, uh, using, now actually I will tell you how we have to count this E p x y. So, given a polytope P, first we uh, triangulate it. Uh, we tra so and uh, uh, for each of the triangulation, we calculate E p x y, sorry, uh, S, yeah, S p x y. So, so I will say uh, uh, the how we calculate the S p x y for uh, S uh, simplex, uh, S p calculation. So, here are the steps. So, let us uh, dimension of P equal to D. Then uh, P has uh, uh, number of vertices of P since it is a simplex is D plus 1. So, let us say vertices of uh, P is equal to V 0 up to V D. Okay. Now, define uh, alpha i equal to denom uh, yeah, denominator of v i times v i, this vector comma denominator of v i. Okay. Now, uh, now let us uh, construct, uh, construct a set d p is equal to summation a i uh, a i alpha i, i equal to 0 to d such that a i greater or equal to 0 strictly less than 1 and a i are rational. Count this set. Uh, 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 okay, so, and of course, uh, summation a i alpha i, i equal to 0 to d belongs to e, uh, e p. So, with we count this set. So, we count all those linear combination of alpha i with uh, coefficient that is smaller than 1, uh, those uh, are elements of E p. E p. So, uh, DJ, uh, the cardinality of d p is finite, because uh, because of compactness, because it will be uh, a compact set, if we omit this uh, condition. And uh, since we are counting integral points inside a compact set, this will be a finite set. So, d p is a finite set. Now, uh, now from here we can write the formula of uh, S P X Y. Is it visible here? X Y is equal to uh, summation 
Okay, I will write in the other board because it is an important formula for us to check. equal to summation uh, beta belongs to d p. So, x power beta 1, x 1 power beta 1, x n power beta a n and y power beta n plus 1. So, we are assuming p is in R n in the first quadrant. Uh, we uh, divided by product. I think one minus. Uh, there I wrote this minus one, but to make this one positive, we have to write x power. Uh, say this set is okay. X power. Uh, denominator of uh, the same thing denominator of bi times bi y power uh, denominator of bi i equal to 0 to t. So, this is how the calculation is and to calculate it for a general polytope we triangulate a polytope in uh, uh, so that we do not introduce extra vertices and then calculate each of them and by principle of inclusion exclusion you calculate the total function. Okay, so, uh, let us do some calculation. I will take some extra minute. Uh, Can this be done on uh, the same basis of the order? Like if we input the vertices and its output uh, Yeah, it needs a solution of some linear equations. Uh, uh, modulo congruence is the. I do not know. I think means I, it can be implemented. I can implement it. Uh, Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so now uh, let's do the uh, let's do a very basic case. Let's p uh, take the interval one to sorry one and half. Uh, then what is i p k? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, dimension of p is equal to one. Uh, and what are the vertices? Vertices of p are uh, sorry, let us say 0, I wrote it 1 is wrong anyway. So, 0 and half and uh, vertices are 0 and half and alpha 0 is 0 1 and alpha 1 equal to 1 2, right. right. So, and what is d p? d p uh, has to be 0, we cannot take any a i that is greater than 0. Uh, because if so, then a i is a fraction over here and that never uh, that fraction plus 0 is remains that fraction and that is never sum of 2 and integer. So, d p is 0. Uh, so, the f function s p x y is equal to 1 by 1 minus uh, x y square times 1 minus y, right. Okay, so uh, what does but uh, what is actually I uh, I P K? So, but we know that. Okay, I'm erasing. I P K is equal to. Uh, greatest integer of k by 2 plus 1, right. So, uh, summation uh, k by 2 plus 1 y power k, k equal to 0 to infinity, this is equal to that sum. Uh, uh, so, I have to put x equal to 1. So, I get 1 minus y square times 1 minus y, which I can write 1 minus y whole square times 1 plus y, right, which I can write summation 
k plus 1 times y power k into summation uh, minus 1 power k y power k. The y, this one coming from here and this one coming from here k equal to 0 to infinity, k equal to 0 to infinity and from here I get uh, the following identity. Uh, what is that identity? I will get summation say k naught plus k 1 equal to k, k naught plus 1 times minus 1 power k 1 equal to k by 2 plus 1. Similarly, uh, we can instead uh, 2 is nothing special, we can uh, take uh, 1 by q. Suppose I take p equal to 1 by q, then I can go uh, similarly find out uh, the sorry p equal to just 1 sorry 0 to 1 by q. q. Then I can uh, go on finding the identities and uh, the identity will uh, uh, look like, okay, I am not writing it. I will just write the identity for q equal to 3. So, you can try this and play with it with getting several identities. Uh, the important thing is that greatest integer functions can be expressed as roots of unity. So, if, uh, k by 3 greatest in this in this function, if you take this is equal to k by 3 minus omega square minus 1 power omega power k plus omega minus 1 power 2 k by 3, which is equal to summation k naught plus k 1 plus k 2, such that k naught plus 1, where omega uh, primitive third root of unity, primitive So, uh, this we get omega or k, k 1 plus 2 k 2. So, you can get all these things going further and further. You can even try more complicated things taking a p by q and do the same thing. Okay, let us not uh, do more calculation. Let us see, uh, let us do some uh, two dimensional polytopes. So, uh, there is another thing I forgot to mention that the rational function what we get its degree is always negative. That means, the degree of the uh, numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, strictly less than the degree of the denominator. Now, suppose uh, I am erasing this now, let that remain as it is. Uh, suppose P is a triangle, is a polygon, polygon in R2. Okay. Now, uh, now what is what we can say about it is that, uh, and let assume that uh, P has integral vertices, integral vertices. Then uh, the function S p y will look like uh, some alpha naught y, which is if alpha naught is equal to the volume of, no sorry that is that will not happen here, okay, sorry. alpha naught y square plus alpha 1 y plus this will be always 1. divided by uh, 1 minus y to the power uh, the 1 minus y to the power uh, degree of p, degree of p is 2, this 1 minus y, oh, sorry, uh, uh, degree of, it, it will be p plus 1, 
d plus 1 yeah there we get something divided by square 1 minus y square here it will be 1 minus y cube yeah so denominator will be degree of uh, the poly to plus 1 1 minus y has that many poles okay so Uh, no. Uh, okay, so uh, a degree is the dimension of the polytope. So this will, uh, when you take expand it, it will come the degree minus one. Uh, so uh, and this i uh, p k will look like something say beta naught. It will be a polynomial of degree two beta naught k square plus beta one k plus now beta naught is area of field okay uh, so beta naught is area of field uh, you want to find uh, say what is this uh, the, there is something called the reciprocity theorem for this polytopes which is a very important theorem and the proof uh, uses uh, Mobius inversion formula uh, to do it geometrically and some local homology to do it algebraically. So, the reciprocity theorem says that uh, I p naught of k, uh, p naught is the interior points of k is equal to I uh, minus 1 power degree of p uh, i p of k i p of minus k so from reciprocity theorem uh, we can say that okay. what we can say so i uh, delta p of k the number of integral points in the kth dilation of the delta p, i delta p of k. So I can set any set and put the kth dilation and count the number of integral points there. So i delta p of k is equal to uh, i p of k minus minus 1 power degree of p times i p of minus k, right? Okay, so uh, in our case, what it counts? So i delta p of k is equal to uh, beta naught k square plus beta one k plus one. Dimension of p is two, so this is just sorry. Dimension of p. Uh, okay. Dimension. So minus beta naught k square uh, plus beta 1 k minus 1. So this is equal to 2 beta 1 k. Now uh, number of, so uh, number of uh, points i p of delta 1, uh, I, uh, delta p 1 is the number of points on the boundary of p, okay, which is equal to delta p intersection z to 0, uh, this number is equal to 2 beta 1. So, beta 1 is equal to i delta phi of phi, beta 1 is equal to half of number of points in delta phi intersection z greater equal to 0 square. So, uh, so, this result with the specific value of beta naught and beta 1 are, is called Pick's formula, which is derived in some other way, but we can also derive from this polytopes. Uh, okay, so maybe, okay, there are some more things, but maybe I will stop here now. So, similarly, you can get many, many, many other things by just playing with the integral polytopes.